Many of the mums I speak with find their postpartum recovery a difficult time, with often a lack of resources and information readily available to them. For many, this is a scary, uncertain time and there's no instruction manual or welcome package to help you along, is there? Getting used to the new normal is hard and there are so often questions you need answers to, right? This week's guest knows where you're coming from and has some excellent tips to help you. Leslie Abraham is a perinatal osteopath who is originally from France where she did her training and has lived in the US since 2016. When Leslie moved there, she noticed the lack of help and information available to women and decided to offer her wealth of knowledge to them. In today's episode, you'll hear from Leslie on topics such as how to help heal tearing after birth. Be sure to listen to the end of the interview so you don't miss any of Leslie's excellent tips. You'll find out at the end of the episode where to access the show notes and how to get in contact with Leslie via her website on Instagram and via her free Facebook group. I'm infant massage instructor Helen Thompson. Hello and welcome to First Time Mums Chat. Being a parent for the first time is challenging and changes your life in every way imaginable. To help ease your transition into parenthood, I aim to offer supportive, holistic approaches and insights for mums of babies aged four weeks to 10 months old. My goal is to assist you to become the most confident, parent you can and smooth out the bumps along the way. This podcast is brought to you by My Baby Massage, so let's do this together. This podcast is for informational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. Please contact a medical practitioner if you are concerned or have any medical issues. Hi Leslie and welcome to First Time Mums Chat. I've been so excited about having you here. Thank you Helen. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be able to talk with you on the podcast. So I thought we'd start with the six week check area but before we go into that I'd love you to tell us a bit about you, what you're passionate about and what your business is all about. Yes. Yeah. And I love that topic. So I'm excited to be able to dive in. So I'm Leslie. I'm a perinatal osteopath. I'm French, as you can hear. I can't really hide it, but I live in the US since 2016. And so my experience really sits with women postpartum and during their pregnancy. And so when I came to the US, I really saw the need for a more, I would say, accurate care of postpartum women that is really lacking from my own experience in other countries. I I was able to work in France and in Canada where postpartum care is very different. So when I came to the US and I was confronted to postpartum care through friends and then clients, I was a bit puzzled from the lack of help that they might receive, the lack of information as well. And so as an expert into that field, I found it really disappointing in a way. So Mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to bring more information, more resources, and more accurate expertise to that field and to these women. So that's why uh, Bonjour Baby was born in the first place, just to be able to bring more resources and more information, everything that all these new mom deserve to know in the first weeks, in the first months, but also in the first years of uh, postpartum life. So that's what I do now. I focus on postpartum recovery, so abdominal and pelvic floor recovery through uh, my own signature program. And yeah, I mean, so far, so good. And I'm just super happy to be able to work with those women and help them feel better from the inside out and be able to find their identity as a mom and embrace new chapter that is motherhood. Mm. Yeah, that's a huge new chapter, motherhood, especially if it's your first time. Yes. <laughs> it's it's a huge new chapter because 
you know, you've had your own life for so long and suddenly this beautiful little baby comes along and it cries for the first time and you think, what am I going to do? We all have so many questions when that mm -hmm. happens about all the changes that we are experiencing, all the challenges that we face for ourselves, for our baby, for our relationship. And, and so this is where we don't find all the answers. It's hard to have access to everything. And, and nobody sent us home with the welcome package or I don't have <laughs> to or something like that you don't really have that so this is where you got confused this is where you are uh, disappointed this is where you kind of you lose hope at one point yes. too because you feel like okay that's just what it is now and it's my new normal which I hear a lot because you know friends are experiencing the same my mom was experiencing the same so I guess that's what I have to go through and it's not the case it's it's really not the case postpartum life doesn't have to be super hard it doesn't have to be very painful there are ways to improve all of that definitely yeah, one of the things is the tearing after birth. And I know that can be really hard for mums, especially if they've had stitches and whatever else, and they come home and they're thinking, how do I cope with this? What do I need to tell my doctor after my six week check and everything? And I know you did a podcast on that. So I just thought I'd ask you what your experience of that is and how can a mother manage that kind of thing? And what should they say to the doctor? Yeah. And that's actually a very good question because that's one of the things that you don't have really instruction for that. So a lot of women experiencing tearing during childbirth, at least in the US, it's really something that they let do. In Europe and in France, especially, it's very different. We go with episiotomy a lot. Here, they really let women tear naturally because it's better for recovery. So that's very different. And so it has been uh, shown that 90% of women who give birth will experience tearing. So that's really something that is very frequent. And so you have four different types of tearing. So the first mm -hmm. thing is to really understand what type of tearing you had during your childbirth, because it will give you a tip, uh, a hint of what kind of tissues has been damaged and what you can do for your own recovery. So the four degrees, the first degree, it's the easiest one. And usually it's just the tissues around the vagina. So this one is the least severe one. Then you have the second degree. So that's the one that we see the most after giving birth. So this one extends bigger and it goes deeper as well into the tissues, into the skin, the muscular tissues of the vagina itself and into the perineum. So now here we are in the perineum. So the mm -hmm. pelvic floor is torn. On the third degree, so this one goes from your vagina to your anus. So if you can picture it, you have those two outlets here. And so the tear really goes from the vagina to the anus. So it's a pretty big one. Mm. And so it goes through the skin into the muscular tissue and it can damage as, as well the anal sphincter muscle. So if you go to the restroom, that can be really, really painful. And these muscles, the anal uh, sphincter muscles, those are the ones that are controlling your bowel movement. As I said, when you go to the restroom, it can be painful. And so here, the pelvic floor muscles are also torn here, and it goes deeper into the pelvic floor layers. The fourth degree, that's the one that we see the least, thank goodness. <laughs> and so this one goes from the vagina through the perineum as well to the anal sphincter muscle and into the rectum. The rectum is like the last part of your colon that ends up into the anus. So this one is really the most painful and the most severe. But so for childbirth, as I just said, the, the one that we see the most is the second degree, okay? So at your six weeks checkup, they will check on the healing process. They will just see how are the scar tissues, if you're healing well, give you any advice on that. And from there, they can clear you out for having sex again with your partner, even for exercise, all that kind of things. So what I recommend to do, even though when you are at your six weeks checkup and they tell you that everything is looking good and the healing process is perfectly on track and that you're okay for whatever, ask for a pelvic floor PT referral. It's very important. And you have to ask for it because most of the OBGYN, they won't tell you right away, okay, mm -hmm. this is healing good, but still you need to do a bit of pelvic floor recovery. 
So ask for it. That's really something that I, I, I tell all of my clients, even though we work together on the pelvic floor recovery, I like them to also see PT because that's a different kind of work. And mm -hmm. so with the PT, there is a lot of work to do because they will ensure a proper mobility of the tissues making sure that there are um, any adhesions that will be left because that can translate into movement restrictions. So we are talking about pain during sex, hip pain, lower back pain in the future. That's not something, especially for the hip pain and lower back pain that you will feel right away, but that's something that can develop in the months and years after giving birth if that wasn't uh, rehabbed and recovered properly with the help of um, some PT exercises. Something else that I like to take my clients as well is to perform some self-massage. So you do it on your own. You don't need to go anywhere. You just need a mirror because it helps to, mm -hmm, to visualize the, the place, but you don't need to use any fancy oils, just your hand, your fingers and contacting the area where you feel the scar tissues and just doing some gentle massage on it. You want to try and feel if you feel any bumps, any dryness of the area. So it's like tissues that are feeling very hard and um, losing their mobility. The elasticity of the skin is not the same as some place just above or beneath the, the tearing. And so you want to gently massage the area. You are looking for a kind of butter melting sensation. So you will feel like the more you massage this area, the tissues just underneath your fingers will begin to melt. So if you feel any bumps or whatever, they will feel more mobile. Okay. I don't mean to say that you do it the first time and it will be a okay and you're done for life. It takes, you know, several sessions for it to really feel better. But when you massage it, because you are really kind of warming up the tissues here, you will bring some more fluids and some more blood to the area. And so you will have this kind of heating sensation of the tissues, but also this kind of melting sensation. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, at first it's hard to feel, but the more you do it, the more you will have the sensation at this place. And so if you don't really feel anything at first, don't get discouraged because like everything, it takes practice, but just by doing it and touching the area and gently massaging the area, you already have a lot of benefits because one thing that we see also with staring, and it's also the case for C-section, but I think we're going to speak about that yeah. after, is that these areas, usually they have some, they feel numb. We don't really feel anything after mm -hmm. tearing. Or, and I saw that with a lot of patients in my osteopathic practice. So just touching this area by gently massaging it can help to reappropriate this part of your body. And that's something extremely important, especially when we speak about the pelvic floor, because that's a beautiful part of your body. And we don't give it any love mm. because it's kind of taboo or I don't know why, but it needs as much love as your, your the, the, the skin on your face needs. It's mm -hmm. as important and it's very important for your future health as well. And so it will help you also if there are any fear about the thought of having sex again with your partner, being able to be in control of that part of your body yes. by gently yes. massaging it will help to decrease the fear as well, because you will know what feels weird, what feels, you know, comfortable or, or what area needs maybe a bit more work. So that, those are my advice and what you should ask for at your six weeks checkup. When you have that tear, how do you know what kind of tear you've had. Do the doctors or the nurses or the midwife actually tell you what kind of tear you've had? Yeah. So usually they tell you, they don't tell you right away, but it's more around the six weeks checkup that they tell you. Some doctors are telling it before. It depends on your doctor, but I always encourage moms to advocate for their own health. Ask all the mm -hmm. questions you want. I mean, you deserve it. It's your health. There's no yeah, secrets to be kept from you. It's not even really legal to do that. So you should have access to all the information. 
So if they don't tell you, and if it's what you want to know from the moment you leave the hospital, if you gave birth at a hospital or even at a birth center or even at home, ask the person who was here to help you give birth. Okay, did I tear and what is the degree? If they are not able to answer you, maybe you will have the answer at your six weeks checkup. But usually it's around the six weeks checkup that they tell you that. Yeah, because I know some mums might tear and after you've said that, they might think, oh gosh, which tear did I have? Yeah, it's very important to know because as I said, it will drive your pelvic floor recovery and for you to understand what's going on with your body, especially in those first weeks, why is it so painful when I go to the restroom? So if you have a third degree tear, that's going all the way to your rectum. So you can Mm -hmm. understand that it can be super painful. So yeah. Yeah, thank you. And some mums don't want to go through that. They don't want to have the tears. They think, okay, I don't want to have the tears so that therefore Mm. they have a C-section. But then again, they might have a C-section for health reasons as well. Absolutely. So when you have a C-section, I know you've got scarring on there as well. And you were talking about the scarring from the tears. So is there something that you can do with the scarring from a C-section? Absolutely. There are plenty of things that you can do from your C-section. And so the first thing to know if you had a C-section is how to move around. Because I feel like I just had a surgery a few months ago. They took out a pretty big cyst on my ovary. So the scar that you have is exactly at the place of the C-section. It's smaller, but still it's the same kind of scar and it's the same kind of intervention. So when you move around, when you have that, at first, it is painful. It is painful Mm -hmm. to twist. It is painful to to, uh, hold someone. You have a baby. So remember Mm. that you have to hold your baby around. So just prepare yourself for ways to be able to move around with less pain. So you will have a lot of pulling sensation, as I said, especially in those twisting motions, but also when you nurse, you feed your baby, when you get your baby out of the crib or um, out of the changing mat or that kind of thing, this is where you will feel pain. And especially in the middle of the night, when you're Mm. still half awake, frustrated and yeah, this is where we don't, this is where we get hurt. So to get out of bed, the, the easiest thing to do is to rolling on the side first, then moving back the um, shoulders, then bringing the knees forward, letting your feet touch the ground, bringing yourself um, onto the bed, and then pushing yourself up so you stand up, okay? If you want to take it a step further, you can add some breath that. So every time you are put, kind of twisting, you want to breathe out and gently pull up the pelvic floor. It will definitely help to secure the area. You can do the same thing when you're lifting up your baby from her crib, the bath or whatever. You always breathe out on the the movement that is working. So when you're taking your baby from the changing mat up, for instance, you breathe out and you engage the pelvic floor as you do so to avoid putting too much pressure in that area. Mm-hmm. When you're sneezing or when you're coughing, that's something oh, that is gosh, I can imagine. very painful. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I experienced it and I can tell you it is super painful. So you want to protect the tissues. So place a hand on your scar and you're kind of pushing inside gently and up just to protect the area. When you feel that the sneeze is coming up, do that and it will help you to decrease the pain. Okay. I won't say that it's not painful at all, but at least it helps you to protect yourself and to decrease any pain. Same thing when going to the restroom. If, if you feel it's really, really pulling, same thing. You put a hand on your scar here and you pull it up a tiny bit and pushing up uh, towards your belly. And it does help as well. And so talking about going to the restroom, if you were prescribed medication to go to the restroom more easily, I want you to take it because it's really helping. It can be being gassy or constipated is one of the worst thing with a C-section, but there are natural ways also to support a healthy bowel movement. 
So I want you to pile up on insoluble fibers from your food. Yeah. yeah so not too much raw veggies or fruits, mostly cooked, uh, because otherwise it can create gassiness and distension of the stomach. Well, that would so, hurt, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with beans. You know, some people don't really tolerate beans. It makes them gassy. So that's something that you might want to avoid for the time being. And yeah, and as well as any food sensitivities or allergies that you have that you can create some gut health issues. In the long term, what we see with C-section, if you don't really recover from it properly, we see uh, hip pain, pelvic pain, lower back pain, and pain during sex. And so same thing with the tearing, that's something that can happen in the months and years following giving birth. So it's also important here to advocate for yourself and to ask yes. for pelvic floor recovery session here, even after a C-section. And I really place some emphasis here because most of the time, lots of women think that because they didn't give birth through the vagina, vagina canal, yeah. yeah, there's no need for pelvic floor recovery. But there is, because your pelvic floor has to adapt to birth, but to yes. the nine months before, during your pregnancy, whatever contractions happen during your pregnancy, the weight gain that goes with pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. everything, all of that, those nine months, we have to do something to help you recover from that as well. It's not only birth. And sometimes it depends. If it was a planned C-section, you don't really have to go through all the stages of labor and everything. But when it's an emergency C-section, you have to go through all the stages of labor. What I want to say is that you don't have to try and push. You know what I mean? Yes. For which... a certain time. Yes. And at one point, you're like, okay, it's taking too long. We do an emergency C-section. So that's not the case. So if you had an emergency C-section, because you tried and push for so long, you can bet that your pelvic floor had some work to do yeah, during course, yeah. birth as well. So that's why it's important as well. Do you want to go into the healing process? I think it's so important for mums to know this because they're not told all this. And this is why I think it's so important. So yes, please go ahead. <laughs> so I keep, I keep going. So... As we said for the tearing, there is a healing process for your scar of the C-section. Of course, it takes weeks and weeks and mm -hmm. weeks and months for the, the, the scars to fully heal. It's not just six weeks. It's more than that for the yeah, full so, process. Yeah. yeah. And so we need to make sure as with the perineal tearing that the tissues that were cut and the tissue surrounding are staying mobile and that there's no fascia and tissue adhesions that are being created. When you have that, usually this is where you have a lot of pulling sensation and just on one spot on your mm -hmm. scar, or you feel bumps, you know, on your scar, or you feel like when you look at it, it's all red and you have this small bump and you feel like there are a lot of tissues intertwined here. And that's usually when you have adhesions here. So, and when you develop adhesions and so fascia restriction, this is where we will have issues with mobility at your other joints. So hip joints, but also the joints around your sacrum and your hip bones that we call the sacroiliac joints, your lower back spine, your pelvic floor muscles also, because they will have to compensate all of that. Yeah. And it can have consequences on how you feel when you move, when you stand, when you sneeze, when you cough, like all of that good stuff. So it's really important to make sure that the tissues around the scar stay mobile. And as I said, it's true for even years after giving birth. I remember I had patients in my osteopathic practice that were coming to me. One of them was a pain during sex and plenty of, of other ones. And so they had children, but years ago, and it was at the very beginning of, of my years as an osteopath. And so I was trying to fix the pelvis and everything. And so as osteopath, we also do visceral manipulation. So we do manipulation on the organs. And so yeah, yeah. coming to the, the pelvic area, this is where I see the scar because they didn't mention it was a C-section. And I was like, oh, okay. 
So let's try and see how the, the, the scar is moving here. And so there was no movement. They had complete oh. numbness around the scar. They didn't have any feeling anymore. And just me touching it was a discomfort for them because it was really loaded with emotions. And that's one part of their body that chose to neglect kind of because mm-hmm. it was yeah, linked because... to a trauma or, uh, you know, something yes. that they don't want to remember. So unconsciously, they completely neglected it. And so just by working on the C-section scar, we had tremendous results, way more than if I was just working on the mobility of the joints. Doing Mm. the two together was where we really had something happening for them. Less hip pain, better pelvic floor mobility, so less uh, pain during sex, that kind of thing. So same thing here, you want to ask for a fascia therapist referral in the US. That's something pretty big. You can find someone pretty much easily or a PT referral. And and it's very important. I really like when they see a fascia therapist for that kind of matter, because this is where really they spend the time to work on the scar and the tissues around it. Mm. Yeah. And at home, you can also do some self-massage. There are some things that you can do by yourself self doing gentle rotating movement around the scar up and down a uh, gentle pulling of the tissues around the scar same thing up and down to kind of try to break up any adhesions and one thing that you can do as well to help with any kind of numbness or lack of sensation is to play around with different types of fabrics on your scar so wow. let's say you try cotton then you try wool that kind of thing to stimulate also the different nerve that helps with sensation around the area. And all of that can be done around week four to week six and up to several months after giving birth. Once they have seen your C-section scar and they tell you that everything is okay, everything is on track, you can definitely begin your self-massage and do all of that things that we just talked about. So I was just thinking what you were saying about the material. I'm I'm assuming you do that after the stitches were out or disintegrated. I don't know how it works. No, (laughs) of course you do that after. And I think today they do more with kind of glue. You know, they glue the the tissues. So it's easier because the glue, in a few days, it's it's all skin. You don't have really glue anymore. In one week or two weeks, you don't see anything anymore. So that's the beauty of that new kind of intervention and how they are sealing the skin now. But if you had stitches, yes, uh, definitely (laughs) wait until... I don't know. I've never had a C-section. And you mentioned a couple of times, and this is something which includes the tearing and the C-section and having sex afterwards. And I know no husbands might want to have sex but to me it's more respecting your own body and saying to your partner having that trust and communication with your partner and saying look yes I still love you yes I still want to have this but I need some time to recover I I just thought of this when you were saying it maybe he could help with the sort of massaging of what you were saying with the tearing and also the scar, because that's also intimacy and everything as well. Would yeah, you agree yeah. with that? I completely agree with that. And and what you just said is is exactly what it is. It is so important to respect our boundaries, the boundaries that we choose for ourselves. And and because from my experience, I feel like, and I see that pretty much every day on, you know, mom's groups and everything. That's a question that comes up a lot. Mm. Like my doctor has cleared me for having sex with my partner again, but I'm fearing it. What are your tips for that? And I feel very sad every time I, I, I see that because I feel like they are being pressured into yes. something that they don't desire yet. And because, you know, the doctor is telling them that, the society is telling them that, they kind of feel they have to rush. And I'm sure if they speak with their partner, their partner was completely completely understand and be able to wait or maybe find other ways to have fun together and still find that connection and intimacy that doesn't require, you know, penetration or anything that is not comfortable for you at that very moment of your life. So, 
it's very sad. And I think we need to do a better job at reframing the conversation around sex in postpartum. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this is something that is needed. But what is needed the most is communication and open communication in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So social pressure is unacceptable and it's not acceptable in your relationship as well. It has no place. I mean, it's up to what you and your partner want, but that's all. I mean, it's not because your doctor is telling you, okay, now it's time to have sex again, that you should do it. I mean, if you're not ready for that, you're not ready for that. Maybe you're battling with postpartum depression. Maybe you have postpartum anxiety. Uh, maybe you're just completely exhausted, like most moms. And that's the last thing on your list. And you really don't want that. And when there is fear around it, I really want to encourage you to talk about that with your partner because mm. your partner didn't give birth. And so it's important to explain them what it was looking like what you feel physically and, and what you feel you are ready for right now. Okay. Maybe it's just foreplay or maybe it's just them at first helping you with the various massage that we just talked about. Decide what you want to do as a couple, not what the doctor and the society mm -hmm. wants you to do. I mean, to me, clear communication, setting expectation, both sides, because the partner has his or her words to say as well and explaining why and sharing how you feel about that and why you don't want it is what matters the most really not because friends told you oh my god you had your six yeah, checkup yeah. and it's time now oh god you guys didn't have sex yet no i mean it's up to you so and as you, we said for episiotomy or perineal tears this is exactly why self-massage is so important. We just say that, but being able to touch this area first, just by yourself. And so reconnecting to that part of your body, mm, it yes. is the first step to be ready also for that. And it will decrease any fear that is linked to intimacy after giving birth. If you are not at ease yourself with providing this massage on this area, I mean, it, it's hard to, to picture that you will be ready for your partner and, and you to be intimate again. You really have to be able to own your body again, yeah. having this intimacy and this connection with your partner. And you're going to do, build it up gradually again so that you will Absolutely. enjoy it and you will yeah. like it. And I think your partner's got to understand that because, as you said, men don't understand what it's like to go through that but they don't understand the after yeah. aftermath of it and I think if some husbands or partners go to the bus and actually see you going through it I think they may understand it a lot more so. yeah I, I agree with you and that's why it's important to explain your partner if he was in the room what really happened physically what you felt you know mm -hmm. how it felt how were the contractions for you? How you felt, what kind of physical sensation you had? So your partner can picture that and how it feels after every time you're walking, every time you're holding your baby, what you feel inside going on. So they can understand that, okay, maybe she needs a bit more time. And it's very, very important to do that. And if you're ready to do the self-massage of your perineum, as we said, you can ask your partner to come and join you and, and, and do that. And so oh, he or she will be implied into that recovery process, which I love, by the way, because I feel it's more, you know, a couple of things than just a one person recovery after birth. So that's totally something that you can do as well. And, and so gradually it will help you to be more confident to share that intimacy again. And he or she will know what is a discomfort for you, what feels better for you, that kind of thing. Because maybe sex will be different now that you have a baby and that you went through childbirth for the first month postpartum than it was just before having a baby or during pregnancy as well. So that's important for them to uh, understand that. Something that can help as well is using any lube 
for sure. That can really, really help, especially if you're dealing with any kind of hormonal imbalances, you can have dryness and it can be painful as well. So that's mm. something that you want to, to keep in mind as well is to work with any kind of nutritional deficiencies that you can have as well that can increase the hormonal imbalances. But you know, the first six to nine months are a bit of a roller coaster. Yes, so you can yeah. have like any different sensation as well, like dryness or all that kind of thing. Gosh, we've talked about so much in this podcast. So I think, I think it's about time for me to ask you, how can people get in touch with you? So it's pretty easy. <laughs> you don't have, to, you just have to go to bonjourbaby.net. This is my website. So you can check what I do. If you're up for a little chat, you can book your free consultation with me. So that's pretty easy. Also have my social media and my free Facebook group. This is where everything is happening. This is where I share the most content. And of course, there is the Bonjour Baby podcast. Thank you. I will just say I highly recommend your Bonjour Baby podcast because I've actually listened to the um, podcast and there are a lot of really, really valuable tips in your podcast. I think you've covered a lot of amazing topics in there. So just wanted to pass that on to mums. Thank you. I appreciate so. I really, I really love and enjoy doing that podcast. And it's, it's, it's really to be able to share, you know, all of the, the resources that we have on hand and that can help um, all mums it definitely shows when you talk so <laughs> just one last thing out of everything we've said what two magical tips would you give to a first-time mum who's going through what we've just talked about to trust herself it's the first one because she knows she has the answers to all of her challenges as a new mom she knows deep inside what to do she doesn't need to be told uh, what to do with her baby she knows deep inside she is a good mom and she she needs to trust herself more so that's my first tip and the second is to listen to her body it's very important. Your body knows what he needs. So in terms of recovery, it's very important. I always say that to all of my clients to really pay attention to the cues of the body and to listen to what's going on. Because every discomfort that you feel, every pain, even if it's not something that is kind of a burden on your life, but your body is trying to tell you something. So listen yeah. closely to it and seek the help of um, other experts to help you. It is so important. I promise you that's really what matters. And especially in women's life at that time, so in order to be able to take care of our little ones and to be present for our families, we need to put ourselves in the first line as well. So that's my two tips. Thank you. They're beautiful tips. And thank you so much for being on the podcast. I've really, really enjoyed talking to you. So yes. thank you so much. I hope you find Leslie's tips and insights as helpful as I did. She really dug deep and shared lots of helpful information to help you during this challenging postpartum time. I highly recommend checking out Leslie's website, her Instagram page and her Facebook page and Facebook group, where you'll find out more about her and her services and offerings. I've included a link to them in the show notes at mybabymassage.net forward slash podcast forward slash zero four seven. Please help me spread the word to other mums by rating and reviewing my podcast on Apple Podcasts. This helps me support more mums just like you for a smooth journey into the exciting world of parenthood. I am really passionate about First Time Mums Chat and providing a weekly resource that helps parents who are new to the whole world of parenting and I want to hear from you. I warmly welcome questions and feedback and comments on my podcast episodes. I am always on the lookout to interview mums who are doing amazing things. Now, if you're looking for ways to experience less crying, less stress and have a happier, more content little one and household, I've got just a thing. Just go here to get your hands on my free cheat sheet and start implementing the techniques now. Mybabymassage.net forward slash baby massage routines. 
So please reach out by sending me an email at support at mybabymassage.net. And once again, thank you so much for listening.